from the Ministry of the Presidency in Georgetown, this is This Week with the President. Welcome to another edition of This Week with the President, a weekly news magazine which provides you with an in-depth look at the policies, programs and work of Guyana's President. In the highlights this week, book on Guyana's first 50 years of independence launch. CARICOM United Kingdom throws support behind Guyana over Venezuela border controversy and President promises penal reform as Commission of Inquiry report into Camp Street prison riots handed over. Stay with us. Transparency and accountability are the hallmarks of good governance, but more importantly, they are the prerequisites for economic growth and for the confidence of the public in the government which they elected. This point was reinforced by President David Granger at the launch of a book titled Governance, Transparency and Accountability, a series of articles that have been written and published in a book by former Auditor General Dr. Anand Gulseran. I'm interested, of course, as head of government in good governance, accountability and transparency. And these three qualities emphasize the importance of, one, effective government policy, two, of the regulatory framework, three of political stability, and fourth, of course, representative democracy. The four go together. Corruption, of course, collides with all four. Some people describe corruption as the abuse of entrusted power for private gain. But I think that there must be a more plastic interpretation I do believe that the real sources of corruption are evident in other crimes, bribery, contraband smuggling, clientelism, cronyism, fraud, graft, nepotism. These are all, I think, aspects of the, the monster of corruption. A lack of transparency in business fosters and conceals corruption, allowing the architects of roguery to evade justice. The occasions which afford the scope of roguery are widespread and across all sectors, and any delay in addressing it would eventually erode democracy, the president said. Crimes of tax evasion, contraband smuggling, narcotics trafficking, trafficking in persons, money laundering, all contribute to corruption. We accept that corruption is corrosive because it weakens the enforcement of the law. It weakens our democratic values. It weakens accountability and transparency. It weakens public trust in government and the institutions of government. But corruption largely dis discriminates against the poor and it favors the rich. It removes resources from the government or from agencies which should be directed towards improving the quality of life. The head of state said that the practice of good governance, transparency and accountability is not just an antidote for corruption in government. These standards can also curb illicit practices in the private sector and civil society bodies. Speaking on the practice of bribery, the president said it goes beyond a few greedy law enforcement and customs officers and involves bigger players who use their influence to stay off radar. It is my view that corruption studies tend to ignore the seminal role of the railroads, the people who construct vessels for the sole purpose of smuggling cheap fuel into this country. Corruption studies ignore those who conspire to import and export illegal drugs, those who smuggle gold and diamonds out of the country to avoid paying royalties across our poorest borders, those who bring in illegal narcotics into unmonitored strips and through our numerous creeks and rivers. Many corruption studies tend to ignore backtrackers persons who avoid the payment of duties, the tax dodgers. The government of Guyana is committed 
to excising corruption, to improving transparency, and to instituting greater responsibility. Our agenda is for improved transparency and probity in public life. And I feel that in order to eradicate corruption, we must have very strong national institutions. And if you keep those institutions down, not only corruption, will corruption flourish, but the state itself will become a rogue state. The book, which features approximately 100 articles written by Dr. Gulasaran for the Stabrook News' Accountability Watch column, deals with various topics. These include the purgation of the National Assembly and the absence of local democracy for over two decades by declining to host local government elections, both by the former administration, the forensic audits, and others. An earlier collection of articles covering the period June 2012 to December 2013 was published in book form separately under the title Public Accountability at the Crossroads, The Guyana Experience. My first major publication is entitled Improve Accountability, Public Accountability, The Guyana Experience, 1985 to 2007. So taken together, these three books provide a detailed assessment of our public financial management systems over an extended period of 30 years and perhaps uh, longer. The president also attended the launch of another book, Guyana in the World, the first 50 years and the predatory challenge by renowned Guyanese-born international diplomat, Sir Sridhar Rampo. I hope that this book will help a younger generation to be aware, to ponder, and to be inspired by some of what has gone before. Those first years in the world and our responses to the challenges that we have faced and still do from the predatory assaults on our borders. The book features an essay on Guyana's engagement with the world in two parts. The first highlights the regional and international encounters in the earliest years of independence, while the second focuses on the challenges it faced on the borders, particularly from neighboring Venezuela. My purpose here is to expose a new, the baseless character of those challenges and to bring home to all our people the serious nature of the dangers that we face. The Venezuelan claim upon us is a calumny born of greed. It is one nurtured by falsity and by fable, and it has been maintained by political demagoguery. It is not a claim that is trivial. It is a claim that is contemptuous of the rule of international law, one that is scornful of the sanctity of treaties. Sir Sridhar was invited by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to write the book as he is knowledgeable about Guyana's international experience over the full 50 years. It throws new light on several areas of Venezuela's baseless claims and looks to a final resolution by judicial settlement under the auspices of the United Nations Secretary General. What Venezuela describes as its claim to a sequel is rooted in its rejection of every relevant international agreement over five centuries, from the Treaty of Munster in 1648 to the Treaty of Washington in 1897 and the Geneva Agreement in 1966. Indeed, 
where Venezuela's arguments to prevail, the frontiers of innumerable countries the world over would be in jeopardy. For the sanctity of treaties, which, which is the glue holding the international community of states together, would have melted. Guyana's resistance of Venezuela's perverse contention is a global service of Guyana on behalf of the world. Guyana in the World provides every Guyanese with the opportunity to become more aware of their country and become aware of its place in the wider global arena. Even in the face of ongoing threats to its territory by neighboring Venezuela, Guyana has remained steadfast to its philosophy of peaceful resolution. On Monday, May 30th, members of the Venezuelan Armed Forces shot at officers from the Guyana Geology and Mines Commission traveling in the Cuyuni River. The government of Guyana, through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, had written to Venezuela seeking an explanation and launched its own investigations. Since then, the Venezuelan military has claimed that the GGMC vessel was suspected to be transporting smuggled fuel and other contraband items, and they too have launched an investigation. However, the Ghana government has warned Venezuela against provocative and dangerous actions that could lead to destabilization of relations. At the same time, the government remains confident that diplomacy is the only way to resolve this controversy. This approach continues to gain traction and Guyana continues to garner the support from the international community, most recently from the United Kingdom and organizations like CARICOM. In the wake of these recent threats, Mr. James Doddridge, Minister of Africa and the Overseas Territories and the Caribbean of the Foreign and Commonwealth Office in the United Kingdom, reiterated his country's support for Guyana during a recent meeting with President Granger at the Ministry of the Presidency. The situation with Venezuela and recommitted the UK to the territorial integrity of, of, of Guyana. The Commonwealth, which has its headquarters in the United Kingdom and over which the United Kingdom has considerable influence, has been strong in its support for Guyana. Just last week, on the eve of Guyana's 50th independence anniversary, Secretary General of the Commonwealth Nations, Baroness Patricia Scotland, had said that Guyana is a diamond in the region and that the Commonwealth stands resolutely behind this country. For the Caribbean region, Guyana is indeed deserving of its unwavering support and CARICOM Secretary General Ambassador Erwin Larocque said that the community stands firm in its determination to preserve Guyana's territorial integrity. Well, the community has been resolute in uh, always speaking about uh, preserving the territorial integrity of Guyana. Um, it is an issue that we are always on. Um, at, at appropriate juncture, statements have been issued, I have made statements, the community as a whole have made statements, the chairman in the appropriate vacation. And um, the, the matter of Guyana's uh, ter territorial integrity is sacrosanct. And the community will always be supporting uh, Guyana in, in this issue. Um, this is this is no question about it. It's an issue, of course, which will be discussed uh, in the next four weeks in July when the heads are here again. Um, as is the case with the situation between uh, Belize and, and Guatemala and other member states where the, there is a, a challenge with regards to the, 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 the territory. But in terms of Guyana, I think there can be no question about the resolute support of the community in, in terms of Guyana's territorial integrity. The latest incident, as well as the update from the United Nations on Guyana's call for a judicial settlement, will be among the agenda items featured at the CARICOM Heads of Government meeting, which will be held in Georgetown from July 4 to 6. In the meantime, President Granger, through the Ministry and the Minister of Foreign Affairs, had requested that the country desist from engaging in behaviors that could erode relations that currently obtains between Guyana and Venezuela. There have been several incidents um, between the Venezuelan Armed Forces and the Guyana Defense Force over the last uh, 50 years. Um, this is certainly not the worst, and as I said, it's too soon to tell. I'm trying to get information on the cause of the shooting, and um, both Guyana, uh, both the, the Ministry of the Presidency, which is responsible for Guyana Defense Force, and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs are working towards a resolution of this matter. Guyana's security and that of the Caribbean region has always been high on the President's agenda. 
Given the ongoing threats to Guyana's territorial integrity, President Granger has consistently called for measures to be put in place for the protection of small states and reiterated the importance of regional security to their development. The president said that the territorial controversy has existed for half a century and has hindered Guyana's attempt to exploit its natural resources, thereby hampering its growth and development. Comprehensive reforms of prison systems become necessary over a period of time, and this is primarily because sooner or later certain categories of prisoners will be released from incarceration and into mainstream society. It therefore becomes incumbent on governments and the justice and prison systems to ensure that these individuals are prepared for the reintegration process. The president believes that youths and first-time offenders of nonviolent crimes should be given opportunities for education and skills training so that they can have a new lease of life. Over the last few months, not a single meeting of the National Security Committee has taken place without the matter of prison reform featuring on our agenda. We want to make Guyana safe and at the same time, we want to ensure that persons who are put into what the Americans call correctional facilities do not feel that this is a lifetime occupation. As I said, sometimes, unfortunately, you encounter people who go to the undernaming primary school and then they go to the Camp Street Secondary and end up at the University of Mazaruni and they spend their whole adult lives in the penal system. Nobody could be happy with that. No president could be happy to see young people spend so much of their lives in the penal system. And for that reason, under the leadership of our prime minister, we engaged, the executive engaged the judicial branch so that we could look at sentencing policy we can look at alternatives to incarceration. On Wednesday, June 1, retired Justice James Patterson presented the report of the Commission of Inquiry into the Camp Street Prison Riot to President David Granger. The riot, which occurred on March 3, 2016, resulted in the death of 17 inmates and injuries to countless others. The commission was tasked to investigate the circumstances that led to the breakdown in management that resulted in a deadly riot so that steps could be put in place to prevent its recurrence. This is a landmark report. It will affect a very important um, element in our criminal justice system. And I'd like to assure you all that the efforts of the government of Ghana will be directed towards ensuring that this country becomes a safer place and that fewer of our children and our men and women go into the, uh, into the prisons. And even if they have to go in for, for any reason, when they come out, they would not want to go in again and we'd reduce our population so that all Guyanese would be able to look forward to that good life. The commission chaired by Justice Patterson included former director of prisons, Mr. Dale Erskine, and human rights activist, Ms. Merle Mendonca. The hearing commenced on March 10. After several requests for extensions, the hearings concluded on May 9. Urge Your Excellency to, with the due diligence that you always deploy, look at the recommendations that we have made and uh, it is hoped that they will be executed in a timely manner because they deserve so to be executed. President Granger said that the government and the nation is grateful to the Commission for its work, noting that the tragedy was the worst of its kind in Guyana's history and that it is important for the events of what transpired on that fateful day come to light. The matters that you have examined uh, during the course of this inquiry um, have been engaging the National Security Committee. The Minister of Public Security, the Minister of State and I actually went on the ground at Mazaruni to look at the conditions there to see whether we could improve every aspect 
of uh, prison life, not only for the staff, but also for the students at that university. We looked at improving the production of food. We looked at providing facilities to encourage uh, the, the inmates to alter their behavior so they don't have to return into that system. We looked at rehabilitation. High-profile criminals from the Camp Street prison will continue to be relocated to the Mazaruni prison, even as government continues to take steps to boost the security and capacity of the Kayuni Mazaruni facility. Over the years, the prison population has grown. And unfortunately, the population has outgrown the infrastructure which was designed over a century ago. So we are aware that something has to be done. And before we took action, we had to find out exactly what the conditions were, particularly in the Georgetown prison, because it's in the heart of the city. And uh, there are schools, there's a population, their homes, their business places, and we want to make sure that there is no threat to human safety ever again. And now let's take a look inside the President's diary. President Granger and First Lady Mrs. Sandra Granger on Friday evening attended the Mexican Mariachi concert, which was held at the National Cultural Center. The Mexican Embassy in Guyana hosted the concert in collaboration with the Department of Culture, Youth and Sport of the Ministry of Education to commemorate Guyana's Golden Jubilee Independence Anniversary. On May 27, President Granger was presented with the sword that once belonged to the late Rupert Craig in the First World War, during which he served as an officer in the West India Regiment. He also attended the seventh commemorative lecture on former President the late Hugh Desmond Hoyt. Minister of Social Protection Ms. Valda Lawrence hosted the lecture. Even before his assumption to office, the President and First Lady captured the attention of the Guyanese society as they presented the ideal of a lasting marriage and strong family. Images of the President and the First Lady have become popular, whether they are casually clad, traveling across the country, interacting with ordinary Guyanese, or dressed to the nines for state and international events. The first couple attended a gala dinner which was held at the Art Chung Convention Center to bring the curtains down on the official celebration of Guyana's Golden Jubilee Independence Anniversary. The president delighted the invitees when he led the first lady to the dance floor for a special dance.
That brings us to the end of this week's program. Thank you for joining me. For regular updates on the Ministry of the Presidency, go to our website, www.motp.gov.gy. Like our Facebook page, Ministry of the Presidency, and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at MOTP Guyana. Do have a safe and productive rest of the week. Goodbye.